In this video, we will learn some of the major functions of the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. We won't go deep enough to learn all of their functions, but we should have a good introduction. A number of years back, I ran across an article published in American Nurse Today. The author, Barbara Bullock, included a clever cartoon representation of the functions of the cranial nerves that I'm basing this tutorial on. The reference for the original is shown on the screen. We'll start with the seventh cranial nerve. You can see it here on the screen forming the outline of the head. It's the facial nerve. It is used as the outline of the head to remind us that the seventh cranial nerve controls facial expressions. It is also involved in blushing, crying, and salivation. We'll talk about another seventh nerve function later. Next, we have cranial nerve one, the olfactory nerve. We've represented it as the nose, and as I'm sure you can guess, its function is smell. Let's add cranial nerve two, the optic nerve, to form the eyes of our cartoon. The optic nerve carries signals from the retinas of the eyes to the brain. I've turned cranial nerve three the oculomotor nerve onto its side to illustrate two functions. Notice that the center of the threes is roughly in the center of the twos. This is to illustrate that the oculomotor nerve controls pupil constriction. I also have part of the threes above the twos. I'm trying to capture the fact that the oculomotor nerve supplies levator muscles that raise the eyelids. Cranial nerve four, the trochlear nerve, shows up as the nostrils. It has nothing to do with smell, but does control muscles that allow us to move our eyes. The muscles supplied by this nerve allow us to move our, move our eyes downward and inward, such as when we try to look at our noses. Cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve, carries skin sensations from the face to the brain. It also supplies the muscles used for chewing and swallowing, so it forms the mouth of our cartoon. Cranial nerve six, the abducens nerve, shows up on the cheeks because it supplies muscles that allow our eyes to move toward the sides of our head. We're back to cranial nerve seven again. We already learned that the facial nerve controls muscles involved in facial expressions and some other things. Now we're looking at its role in taste perception. This nerve carries taste information from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue to the brain. Cranial nerve eight, the vestibulocochlear nerve, is representing the ears. There are other names for cranial nerve eight. Sometimes it is called the auditory nerve and sometimes the statoacoustic nerve. Any of these names are fine. I prefer vestibulocochlear because it describes the function of the nerve well. It carries signals from the cochlea for hearing and signals from our vestibular system for equilibrium and detection of rotation. Cranial nerve nine is the glossopharyngeal nerve. It carries taste and other sensations from the posterior third of the tongue and parts of the throat. It also helps with swallowing, salivation, and some of the movements that we make when speaking. Cranial nerve 10 is the vagus nerve. This complex nerve carries sensations from the neck and throat. It helps to control movements of the throat, esophagus, and larynx, which can also be involved in speaking, and has parasympathetic connections to the stomach, intestines, and other organs, such as the heart. Cranial nerve 11 is the spinal accessory nerve. It is sometimes called the accessory nerve, but should not be called the spinal nerve to avoid confusion with the 31 pairs of nerves entering and exiting the spinal cord. In our cartoon, cranial nerve 11 is supposed to represent the shoulders and neck due to this nerve's control of neck and shoulder movements. Finally, we have cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. It is by the tongue in our cartoon because it controls the movements of the tongue. You might find a mnemonic helpful 
in remembering the functions of the nerves. As we've gone through them, you may have noticed that some of the nerves are sensory, meaning they convey only sensory information to the brain. The olfactory and optic nerves are good examples of sensory cranial nerves. Other nerves have motor functions. They help to control movements. For example, the trochlear nerve controls certain types of eye movements, but doesn't have a sensory function. There are also nerves that have both sensory and motor functions, such as the facial nerve. The mnemonic can help you to remember which nerves are sensory, which are motor, and which are both. If the word starts with S, the cranial nerve is sensory. Those starting with M are motor. And finally, those starting with B are both. The 12 words that make up the mnemonic are listed in the order of first cranial nerve to 12th. Here it is. Some say money matters, but my brother says big brains matter most. One is sensory, two is sensory, three is motor, four is motor, five is both, six is motor, seven is both, eight is sensory, nine is both, ten is both, 11 is motor, 12 is motor. Let's add the names of the cranial nerves to complete the mnemonic. Knowing the functions of the cranial nerves is very important, so if you want to be a serious student of the brain, you will need to memorize these functions. Happy memorizing!